So you've uh, made the news recently. Um, I feel like you're all over the place right now because your your YouTube channel, I guess it's not a YouTube channel, your television channel, In Range, you decided to post your videos on Pornhub as a response to some of the targeting and censorship that you felt that you've uh, suffered under YouTube. Explain what, what that decision's about. Oh, okay, yeah, sure. So uh, really, In Range TV is a combined effort between myself and another, my co-host, Ian McCollum. Um, I was running, I've been a, a firearms aficionado and competitive shooter for a good 20 plus years, um, as well as an information security specialist on my career side. And so I see them as kind of similar interests in, in that they're both based in the idea of technology and in the concepts of how technology works. We originally started In Range TV um, oh, quite a few years ago, and we tried to be not on YouTube at all. We started off on a network called Full30.com when it started. We had some lessons learned from that in that the reality is that if you're not on YouTube, which is the world's largest content distribution network, you might as well be off the island. Um, it was very hard to grow the project, very hard to grow subscribership, very hard to get people to see your content because YouTube is where people go for their media today. You know, I saw this new YouTube policy come about, uh, I don't know, was it 10 days ago, eight days ago now? There's a ticking time bomb right now in which they doubled down on their anti-firearm stance saying that you could not show certain types of firearm content. You could not link to anyone that sold, sold firearms or firearm accessories. Now they do mention in the specifics like bump stocks and acceleration devices, but they also mention or other accessories or linking to people who sell such accessories. Well, everyone that creates firearms content that has anything to do with modern guns links to people that sell the products they're, so, they're just demonstrating because otherwise we wouldn't be able to survive. So I opened up a channel on Pornhub and started distributing the content there because I believe that they actually have the technology and the wherewithal in terms of the promotion of free speech and understanding of this problem to support us. The thing I want to clarify is we're not just on Pornhub. I continue to be on Facebook, Full30, YouTube, uh, BitChute, and as well as Pornhub as part of the decentralization endeavor. What I want people to realize before it's too late, at least in my opinion, is that we're not at the point yet where this corporate oligarchy controls the internet to the point where they can actually stop us. I feel like uh, uh, YouTube is probably, I mean, I don't know how you feel about this, but of course they're allowed to do whatever they want with their platform. Um, but their brand, much like Facebook, is that of a public square. They shouldn't um, be choosing who gets to talk about what and who gets to watch what, and yet they do that all the time. Does that? Does that undermine their, their long-term viability, even though they're the 800-pound gorilla today? I think it undermines their value, and I think it undermines um, a, a more important principle of the internet, which is the freedom of information, data, and speech. So yes, uh, from a libertarian ideal, I would agree, a private corporation has the right to do what they're doing, and I'm not saying they don't have the right. The question that comes into play for me is that when you look at what's going on with the internet and our experience with being able or attempting to distribute our content to multiple content distribution networks and having very little traction doing so because the reality is the eyeballs and the consumers are sort of owned by a couple large corporations that I would say are corporations of almost nation state level and power, if not are of nation state level and power. When you look at things like Alphabet Corp, Amazon, Facebook, these large corporations have taken over such large swaths of control over the internet that when you are a marginalized content creator and those entities decide that you are no longer part of the public conversation, libertarian ideals aside to, for a moment, it means that they can pretty much erase you. Um, you could put your content somewhere else and you can put it somewhere that is um, still at least technically accessible. The reality is you'll never be seen. You're now living in a digital cul-de-sac and your voice has been suppressed so much that you become irrelevant. And so there's this converging problem in my mind about what happens when what has become the public sphere of conversation and speech, which is things like Facebook, or are things like Facebook and YouTube, what happens when that public sphere of conversation is all privately owned and the private corporations or private organizations in their bias as part of a moral panic or whatever social movement is afoot of the day decides that you're no longer allowed to speak. The hard reality is you're erased from the internet.